I expect to see a lot of comments about how this Glock is not as good as another one, or how the model you have is perfect since you built it yourself, or because you sunk a couple grand of your own money into an Airsoft Wizard level 165 technician so you could spank it with the highest end parts that would make even a deep pocketed PC builder blush. But there's just one thing. This one's legitimate. This one is a Glock. It's Glock recognized. It's Glock approved. That's a major accomplishment. That's a major feat for the airsoft world, or at least that's what I'm being told. But what does that mean for its performance? Nothing! It can say McDonald's along the side for all I care, as long as it works as it should and stands somewhere in the middle of the chart of performance in comparison to other gas blowback pistols. So if Glocks are your drug and you think that everything that fires a pistol caliber should accept Glock magazines only, then let's just see if the Elite Force Glock 19 Gen 3 by VFC is worth its price of $170 without making this into a four part series. But why am I not reviewing the more popular Glock 17 Gen 4? Well, that's simple. They were just out of stock at the GI Tactical Store in Plano, Texas. And the ones I got my hands on are expected to be gone as well very soon. Now this review is sponsored by Airsoft GI of course, which is where you can get one of these Elite Force Glocks for the aforementioned price of $170. But before you do that, let's get into the review where we always begin with the unboxing. When it came to the cardboard box this time, I was a bit excited to see the graphics on it. Like a KWA or a GNG box, you can immediately identify what this is since there's only about a dozen Glock logos all around it. Someone is very proud that they got the licensing and I guess this is one way to show it. Opening it up though, it's like any other Elite Force and Numerex pistol I've ever unboxed. We've got the gun wrapped in some plastic, some paperwork, and some extra O-rings which is a bit different from normal but well appreciated. The paperwork I mentioned consists of your return information, your registration, and a small but detailed manual over your gun. This will go over all the controls, how to break the pistol down, how to adjust your hop up, and how to use your safety, and there's copies of the same directions in other languages as well in this booklet. Then with all that out of the way, we have the Glock 19 itself to take a look at. Right away, I can say it feels like a VFC pistol. I've always had a thing for how Vega Force products feel, they just always feel strong and very well built with, of course, the grip and texture of the Glock frame aiding to this. Yeah, go figure, a Glock fits well in the hand, or at least in my baby hands. The slide is not bad either. It's smooth to the touch, but features deep grooves on the rear for a better grip when racking the slide. Moving along, the sights up top are as clear as day and are very usable. While the whole pistol overall is trademarked all over the place from the inside of the slide to the personalized serial number under the ejection port and under the accessory rail and all over the magazine and grip. I have to say this is a really spot on replica coming from VFC and Elite Force. Aesthetically, this pistol looks great and everything feels worth its price tag. Continuing on to the controls, I'll start with the slide. All right, moving on to the frame. The slide release will of course lock the frame to the rear upon an empty magazine, and it did this just about every time when emptying a magazine with this gun. The slide will also go forward if you power stroke it, which is great too. The trigger safety is also effective. You need to apply your trigger finger correctly to fire this pistol, or else the safety will not release the trigger, just like the real firearm. But when used properly, I found that the trigger on the stock pistol is actually really good, and with a proper fill of gas, you can get some quick follow-up shots. I will say however that the slide out of the box can hang up quite a bit when manually racking the slide slowly, even when lubed. But I can accredit this to the breaking in factor that the majority of gas guns have to deal with, so I assume with some time that this will disappear. It doesn't affect the firing of this pistol very much, if at all, so this shouldn't mean all that much. And since all airsoft guns are made a little bit differently, this might not affect all Elite Force clocks. Then lastly, we have the magazine release. That will drop your magazine freely, of course. All these controls work, and I don't really have much to gripe about here. At this point, this pistol is either so basic like the real thing, or I'm just getting so used to these reviews that I feel like I'm reviewing a revolver. There's just not much for me to say. I don't know if that's because I'm bored of what I have to show you guys, which isn't true, or if this gun itself is just boring, which isn't all that true to me. For some reason, I see this pistol as nothing more but a tool. For airsoft, that's odd for me. Most of the time when it comes to airsoft replicas, I feel a small connection to what I own or what I'm reviewing because of history, my personal want, or because of a variety of media. But when it comes to a normal stock Glock, well, they just do their job and that's it. Kind of like how a bland and uninteresting worker goes to his office job without saying much before returning home alone. He doesn't even drive a car that's worth mentioning. He just takes the bus home. That's this pistol to me. That's not a bad thing, but it's nothing groundbreaking to me either. Like, what am I supposed to say? Oh wow, I'm totally not surprised, Eddie. You take the slide away from the frame to get to the wheel type hop-up. 
but I will say I was surprised that VFC hid the gas fill valve for the magazine under the Glock trademark base plate. That's nice to see, but I can see people just drilling a hole straight through the base plate so they can just fill their magazines much easier, but it's the thought that counts. They gave us the option. So I kind of like this. I also hear from friends who already have Elite Force Glocks that their Tokamari magazines work in these. I don't have any of those magazines around to show that, but I'm sure someone will chime in in the comments down below about that. Now the magazine that the Glock 19 by Elite Force comes with is pretty average in the performance department with a capacity of 19 rounds, and you can empty the magazine on a single gas fill reliably. I was actually able to get 45 shots off on one gas fill before getting 40 off with the second gas fill after laying the magazine cool. But one thing that really bothers me about this magazine, and it has nothing to do with how it looks or anything like that, it's this. Just look at this price. $44 per magazine. Are you out of your f***ing mind? That's roughly the same cost of an LM4 gas magazine. When I know that gas blowback pistol magazines are roughly priced around $25 to $38, and then out of nowhere the Elite Force Glock magazine swooped down with a price tag like this. Now I can see where people are not too happy about the prices that these things demand, because that's completely banana sandwich, if you will. But dialing it all back a bit, if you're buying any standard Glock, regardless of brand, you know very well what you'll be getting. You can watch all the reviews you want over it, but you're not going to get anything that should really surprise you. A bolt of lightning isn't going to shoot out of the barrel and send you to a retro world of cybernetic animals that'll help you defeat a one-eyed pirate that rides into battle on a Harley motorcycle. I love synthwave music, by the way. You can blame the Prime Thantos channel for that and this mix that he made. I, I dare you to listen to the whole mix. You'll love it. Or you'll absolutely hate it if you're driving because you're almost guaranteed to get a speeding ticket. Anyways, this pistol chrono's at who cares, and the range is whatever. With point, you're gonna use whatever you want anyway, Graham BBs. Okay, truthfully, I do love that this Glock 19 shoots at sub CQB velocities, as that's always a big factor for pistols. However, I didn't have the proper range to test this gun, but if I had to guess, since it did really well in the range I did have, I'd say that 150 or 100 feet with a .2 or maybe a .25 Graham BB should be achievable. But would I want this pistol for myself? Well, yes. But why? After seemingly not being wowed at all by the pistol or by its price tag. Well, because I know that parts are everywhere for the Glock platform, and the Elite Force Glocks are only going to further that. I'm sure that builders and techs from all around the world are pulling these things apart all the way down to the individual screws, so they can make these pistols perform way better. Elite Force just began releasing these a couple months ago, and I was told at SHOT Show that every Glock is being worked on so an airsoft variant can become a reality. So that's pretty good news right there. What I would really like to see though is a truly licensed G18 with a fire selector and readily available extended magazines. I wouldn't be surprised to see those flying off the shelves everywhere. No, you won't be finding a threaded tip at the end of the metal barrel, which hardly sways my opinion about pistols anyhow, but what the Elite Force Glock 19s do have is easy to use controls, a great build, clear and very usable iron sights, it's fully licensed if that matters to you, and they have a lot of support from Elite Force right now. So if you ever have a problem or something breaks on yours, then I'm sure they'd be happy to get it fixed for you. For those who absolutely love Glocks, then this may be the next pistol for you for airsoft or even for your real firearms training. I do say though, you should really try these out for yourself personally if you have a friend who owns one or if you can walk into a store and try one out. But if you can't do that, then I'll say that if you have the money to spare and you want to get the most realistic Glock replica out there, then here it is. A lot of people will debate that, but I understand. So from the unboxing to the overall conclusion of what I thought about the Elite Force Glock 19, do you think it's worth the money or do you have a better idea in mind? Let me know in the comments down below, especially if you have one of these yourself. But I would like to thank Airsoft GI for sponsoring this review and GI Tactical for having me once again at their store in Plano, Texas. I'd also like to thank all the people that recommended I do this review and all these awesome commenters. I have another review on the way from this trip and gameplay to come, but until the next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time.
Here you go. I'll see you later. Yeah. Have a good one. I'll try.